If you're serious about building a brand, it's, it's a year by year. Billion dollar businesses actually have been built already on the back of just social media. So today we're gonna to talk about creating a seven figure social media strategy. It sounds gimmicky, it's not. I'm not selling anything. You're gonna see why we call it that. Is that really possible? Before you start doubting it, because I know everyone's mind goes seven figures is bull crap, right? I want to learn how to have a strategy, something basic, I want a presence. Yes, it's possible, I'm gonna show you how. But first, what the training is not. So I'm not teaching you how to post the warm, happy pictures. I'm not about that. I'm not about how do we do cute little gimmicks and get some likes and get, that's just, that's not my game. So I don't care about the likes and followers thing. I have friends with two, 3,000 followers that out of that make mid six figures. So it's, it's something that's very, I care the quality. Who are you engaging with? These people do business with you. What's the value of your network, not the quantity? A lot of people buy fake followers just to look good. If you've done that, stop doing it. I'm not gonna ask you guys to DM 100 people if you don't know DM, direct message. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, going into the messages and every day trying to cold prospect, that's great too. But I'm not gonna ask you to do that, not today. It's not the deal. Uh, and in short, it's gonna be like nothing you've probably seen before. It's gonna be very basic. We're gonna go very simple, but it's gonna be different. It's gonna be something maybe you haven't thought about and it can be applied in a lot of areas. So about me, a lot of you probably is the first time you're seeing me unless you've been to events in the past, but my name is Darren Cabral, I'm the CEO of Suit Social. So we're a social media marketing agency. We're one of the first ones to open in Barrie to do only that. We're one of the top three in Canada, ranked twice in a row. Uh, and our team is right here in Barrie, right on Saunders Road. That's our office, we're very close by, we're local, hence why we're here. But basically we help businesses with social media. They have goals, they have objectives. Typically it's ROI based. They wanna make a certain amount of money, increase revenue to a certain point. We build strategies, we manage everything from their content creation, their video work, their advertising, strategy, like every piece of it, that's basically what we do. So some of the brands we've worked with, uh, we're not brand new at it, so we've worked with Honda Canada, Prime Motor Group is the second largest motor group in the States, uh, Woodfire Pizza, so maybe not Domino's, but we got Woodfire. Uh, Nine Round Kickboxing franchise, Team Jordan is a good friend, worked with her as well, uh, with Lorraine. Uh, Suitworks Business Center, which is very close by, ATS Containers, Sports Clips, the franchise, Carefree Boat Club, the franchise, Sunflow Roofing, if you guys know Mike McCann, you must have seen him somewhere if you're in Barrie. So we work with old Mike. That's just a few. So awards, just to get some of the social proof out there. But like I said, we won top agency twice in a row. 2017, 2018, out of 3,000 social agencies across Canada and a bunch of other fun stuff and certifications. There. Before I get into this, if you guys like what I'm talking about, if you like the way I talk, I have a podcast. Very valuable. It's obviously 100% free. It's on iTunes. It's on SoundCloud. I interview some of the top influencers. We, I've interviewed real estate people. I have real estate huge CEOs have come on the podcast. Um, very valuable. It's free. I highly encourage you to check that out. And without further ado, we're going to cut into it. Oh, there you go. Care enough to take it down. Yeah, if you just type in either my name or you type in obscure to authority, you'll find it. It all comes up on Google pretty easily but take a picture, write it down. I'll let you guys finish writing, sorry. <laughs> I'm anxious. I wanna teach. Okay, cool. Everyone's pens are down, yeah. Cool, so what is the seven figure social media system? So that was enough about me, I wanna teach you guys something now. I wanna bring some value like I promised. So, Firstly, I want to explain that name because that's where a lot of people get caught up. I have to use it because it catches attention for sure, but there's actually a reason behind it. So we've used this system. So what I'm going to teach you is a very basic framework of advertising. It's not just applicable to social. And if you open your mind a little bit, you'll see how you can apply it in all areas of your marketing. We call it this because I've used it with seven, eight, nine figure businesses that we've managed and we've implemented the same strategy, the same framework. It's not a do this, do that. It's, it's just a high level framework. So it's something that you can be creative within, but as long as you follow the framework, that's where you're gonna make the money from. So we've used that for all kinds of brands, big companies, small companies, international companies, national companies, um, all sorts. Real estate agents, individually, brokerages, teams, it always works, and you'll see it when I get into it. So this is the overview of the actual system. You should see a pyramid up there, very basic pyramid. Obviously, I'm not a graphic designer. Um, what you have is three pieces of this pyramid. You have an awareness stage, you have a lead gen stage, and you have a sales and conversion stage. I know we're getting right into the heavy stuff. I told you, no fluffy pictures. What this means is, the awareness stage represents high value content. Content that brings value to your customer. What does value mean? Typically either education or entertainment. You're either making them laugh, smile, or cry, or you're teaching them something that's highly valuable, something that saves them time, saves them money, or makes them money. 
one or the other. That's an awareness stage. I'm going to dive into all of these and you'll see the picture again. The lead gen stage is actually now capturing those people. You've given them value. Well, how do we just, because you don't want to stop at value. We don't want to stop at here's a bunch of free content. How do we turn those people, that audience into leads? Names, numbers, right? Emails. How do we grab that? So that's the second stage. And the third stage is sales and conversion. Once we have the attention and we've built the trust and the awareness stage and we've captured the lead and we have information, how do we get them to buy from us? Because at the end of the day, I know we all like to be like great social warriors, but really we want to make money. So we want to know if I'm putting time into something and I'm giving people value and I'm building awareness and I'm giving, how do I get back? How do I get my ROI in that time? More, even more so than the money, to be honest, because social media is a big time commitment. I get that. And if you're like me, money's money. You can make it back, but time you can. And if you're spending hours every week, how do we make that back? That's the sales and conversion stage. So what you might be thinking is, but my clients don't use Facebook, not for business. They're not on there, but for you guys, maybe not. I would say that everyone like you're selling to anyone that needs a home essentially, right? Probably they are. But if they're not, and you're still saying that, because we, that's the biggest objection we get when we start talking about social media is, oh, they're not on Facebook, they're not on Instagram. Um, they are there. They're 100% there. They might not be there looking for their next home, but they're there engaging with their daughter, their granddaughter, their son, their cousin, their aunt, their uncle. They're there. And as long as they're there, there's an opportunity, right? They're still people. They're the same people that would come into your office and ask a question. They don't change because they're on Facebook. Just because they're there for another reason doesn't mean you can't bring that attention in and convert that. So I need something from you guys that I'm going to ask. And I always ask, which is I need your commitment because I did, I actually wasn't supposed to do any speaking this year. I don't know how this happened, but we booked four already, but I did probably 30 events last year. And what I seen last year speaking to all kinds of audiences all over Ontario, Vegas, Toronto, everywhere was I talk, I talk, I talk, everyone nods their head and smiles and then everyone leaves. Nothing happens. No notes get taken. It's just a day out, free pizza and a drink. So if I'm going to take the time, right? I don't get paid to do this. We're here to bring you guys value, right? As request. I like the group. I like the organization. I want to be part of it. You guys got to commit to put something into action that you learned today. Something that I teach you, at least one part of it, even if it's a little bit, put something into action. Otherwise you just wasted a ton of time. And like I just finished, time is valuable, right? And I'm a big believer that perfect, Inaction never beats imperfect action. So even if you don't get it fully, take the action, make it happen. Okay, so this is what we're actually gonna cover. Now that that's out of the way, I wanna make sure everyone's mind's in the right place. What is social media? So I want you to start thinking business media, not social media. We're gonna cover that. Types of social media, organic versus paid. What's the difference? What you need to know? Because that's something we have to talk with everybody about. There is two parts to social media and they're very different. The other one is understanding your buyer. What to say and who to say it to. Super important. A lot of people are creating content that they want to see. You're making videos that you think look good or that you think are important, but does your client think they're important? We got to figure that out because that's where people go wrong. And then we're going to actually show you the system. So the seven figure social media system. So once you have your foundation, you understand all these little pieces. I'm going to actually break it down. Try to do it a little faster today than I normally do. By the way, Danielle, if you need to pull me off, pull me off because I'm going to go for like 60 minutes. Um, so, our, where, so basically what we're going to do is go through that whole pyramid, the whole funnel, which is going to be those three pieces, awareness, lead gen, and sales, which I've covered. You're going to see all of that. Okay. Everyone cool on that? Any questions before I jump in? Everyone can still hear me? Yeah. Is it possible to get a copy of the slideshow? Yeah. Haley, we can do that? Yeah. We can do that. Okay. Cool. No problem. And the worksheets you have, by the way, I was going to skip that they kind of track the slides. So it kind of gives you a high level of what we're going to go through. At least you have that. Yeah. And then if anyone wants it, uh, just yeah, email. If you want to write that down, Haley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y, at, imagine if I messed that up, suitssocial.com, S-U-I-T-S, social.com. Email her, just ask her nicely. She'll send it to you in a PDF. Cool? Good question. Okay. What is social media? So let's start breaking this down. Social media is basically communication at scale. That's what I always start at. So before we think of it as just a fun tool or whatever, what it really is is communication at scale. It's going to let you get your message out to whoever you need to get it out to and you control it. You don't have to necessarily buy time on a TV network or radio. You can have your own little system and your own little platform that you control with your own audience. That's what it is. 
and there's a large difference between social media and business media. So right now, how most people use social media, the average person, it's actually a giant waste of time, right? Because they're using social media. So social media is things like interacting with friends and family. I'm not saying that's a waste of time, but killing time. They're, you know, they're bored. They're waiting for their bus to come. They're in the lobby of a waiting room somewhere, uh, watching funny cat videos. That's what people are doing. Like, let's face it. For most people, it is a time suck. And a lot of entrepreneurs come to me, business owners, entrepreneurs, salespeople, with that mentality of, I don't have time for that. It's a waste of time. My kids do that. They just sit there plugging away all day. Well, that's not how you're going to use it, right? We're going to have a different way to do it, and that's what I'm going to transition your mind. So business media is what you're doing. So if anyone asks or gives you, like, because I hear this sometimes too. We'll have someone in an office start doing social media all the time, and their coworkers will be like, oh, you're always playing with social media, playing with social media. So we'll change the name. You're not doing social media. You're playing with business media, right? You're controlling business media. That's how you're going to switch in your head, okay? That's a massive tool that you're going to use to grow your business and grow your revenue, and it's now a business tool just like any other. And the reason it's so powerful, active social media users make up 3.2 billion or 42% of the population. That's huge. What TV network, what radio, what anything has that? And obviously you don't need that, but the point is this is a system that the planet's connected to. And that's valuable, very valuable. In 2015, Facebook influenced 52% of consumers online and offline. Meaning even if they didn't buy something directly from what they were seeing, it then influenced the decision later. So this is the first time in 2015 that we cracked the halfway mark. More people are being influenced before they buy by social than not. And that's 2015, because we don't have the data on 2018. So imagine now, one in four users are following brands on social media from which they might make a purchase. So a quarter of that 3.2 billion is actually there and watching and might actually make a decision to do business, to buy a home with you, to get a consultation, to come get their house, whatever it is, they're there. Business media, the reason it's different, we don't use it for wasting time, we don't use it for all that fun stuff, we use it to generate awareness for our brands. If you look at my podcast, it's called Obscurity to Authority. Right now, most of us are stuck in obscurity. You're great at what you do, you're an expert, you have a great tight network, you have proven results, but not enough people know who you are. They don't know what you do, they don't know why they should do business with you. That's how we need to fix this. We need to generate awareness so people know you exist, they know your values, they know how good you are, and they can start trusting you before they do business with you, okay? Business media is used to generate leads. It's a tool, not again, not cat videos. We're gonna generate leads. We can get names, numbers, emails, and a lot more. It's actually pretty scary how much we can get. Business makes money. So if you're still on the fence about why it doesn't make sense, business media makes money. Social media sucks time. We wanna be on this side. It also lets you engage with customers in real time. So having a pulse, when you build an audience and you have people following you, that ability to be constantly connected or your assistant to be constantly connected if you don't have the time. But somebody can reach out in real time and always communicate. They have a question, boom, they've been answered. They don't have to wait, they don't have to book an appointment, drive to your office next week. You're always connected and that's valuable because you can speed up conversations. And when you speed up conversations, you speed up sales cycles because you move faster. So this helps that. Examples of business media. This is one I always show, but can we actually play that, Haley, or no? Let's try that. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. <laughs> Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. <laughs> Looking good, Papa! Stop paying for shave tank you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. All 100 are going to ship them right to you. <laughs> We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? I'm working. What are you doing now? <laughs> I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes sense. So, so stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. <laughs>
Yeah, so the point I'm showing you is, I know that seems random, right? But there was a time when companies like Gillette, right, built a large brand and it took a lot of time and billions of dollars and tens of thousands of people and they had to get PR and they had to get media spots and they had to get TV and they had to leverage radio. This company started from zero and an idea with a little bit of money and this is a super like exaggerated example but they started with a little bit of money and an idea and the only platform they advertised this whole business on was Facebook and YouTube ads. Facebook and YouTube ads like that. One thing they did. They didn't go on every single day and post. They made one really great ad and they ran that for six months. They grew until they got acquired for over a billion dollars in whatever it was, two, three years. It was a super short period of time. A billion dollar acquisition from an idea and a Facebook and YouTube ad. The reason I show this is like, look, that video alone, 22 million views, right? A million subscribers. It's ridiculous. The first year they ran it, they were getting valued at $650 million, right? Because now they have a proven system that sells things. And how much work did that take? One video. We can shoot one video for all of you in like two hours. Same concept. And then what we do with it is what counts. How do you actually promote it? So my point is we have to take it more seriously because if people can build a billion dollar company out of this platform, and I've seen it in every industry, I've seen it in real estate, by the way, if anyone knows Grant Cardone and he has Cardone Capital now and he has a billion dollars of assets under management by filling his funds through social media and his network, very powerful. But if it works for them, the point is you can sell an extra deal a month, two deals, three deals, if they can do that, right? So that's my point, just in case there's any doubt. And not clicking. Want to click for me, Haley? Thank you. Why isn't it clicking? Oh, there we go. And we're on. So any questions on that part? Any doubts still? Cool. Types of social media. I want to clear this up again real quick. There's two sides of social media I want to make sure you understand. So if you hear me use these words, you know what I'm talking about. There's organic. That's anything that happens organically, meaning you're not putting money behind it. There's no paid budget. It's not an ad. That's posting. That's content. That's comments. That's maybe some fun contests. That's anything you're doing that's not a paid ad. That helps you build community, maybe build an audience. Um, but really, the effectiveness of this is kind of dying and it's getting less and less and less because I don't know if you guys figured this out, but platforms like Facebook and Instagram, they don't show everything you post to your whole audience. It's a small percentage. Most people have figured that out by now. If you have 100,000 followers and you post, maybe 5,000 see it, maybe 10,000 see it. And the way they determine is based on the quality of what you create and how people engage with that content. The point is though, they really control that part. Like they could just cut it off completely and it'll reach nobody. So the part I like, which is scalable, is paid media. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about using this as a paid media strategy. And like I said, you could take the principles applied anywhere, but I'm going to be showing you how to do it as a paid strategy, how to put dollars behind a campaign and actually go from awareness stage, like you saw, like I would classify that Razor video as an awareness stage video to an actual lead to a sale. And how we're going to build that with paid media, okay? Because like, I think, actually, I think it was a Dan Kennedy quote. I never remember, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but he had this quote which is the most constant, predictable, and scalable method to grow any business in any industry is paid advertising. The reason is once you figure it out, it's plug and play. Once you figure out that this type of creative, this type of funnel works with this amount of money and this amount of money comes out, you can just keep plugging in more money. You have an ATM that every time you put a dollar in, two dollars comes out, right? And we don't have to rely on algorithms. We don't have to rely on like who's going to like our post this week or Facebook cutting my reach. We have a system. We're willing to pay for it and we'll continue to profit as long as that system works, right? So that's kind of the way that I go. And the beauty of paid advertising is, is very flexible. You set your budget. You don't got to go in and do a $20,000 ad buy. You can start with $5 and you can ramp up as you go. You have a bad month, you can bring them down. You have too many leads, you can bring it down. It's very, very flexible and there's all kinds of objectives. Like I said, awareness, lead gen, conversion, you can do all that stuff. Okay, so for the purpose of this workshop, we're talking about just paid media. We're talking about how you can use paid advertising on Facebook to actually make sales. Cool? There it is, Dan Kennedy. That's another one. Whoever can spend the most amount of money to acquire a customer wins. That's so true. If no one gets that, that means if I can spend $100,000 to get one customer and you can spend $10,000, I'll get more customers. There's a lot of things that go into that formula, right? Like how much can I make on a deal? How profitable is my advertising system? But that's the truth. So your question shouldn't be, how do we spend as little marketing budget as possible this year but get a good result? It should be, how do we make as much money as possible from what we spend? And then how do I spend more? That should be the question. Any questions on that? Cool. Understanding your buyer. 
let's cut through this. So there's a few things very high level. Obviously, this, is, this whole presentation is going to be high level. I can't drill into anything, but I can give you an idea. So a big part is understanding who your buyer is. So you need to kind of, if you have extra paper or you just want to think about your head or take a picture and do it later, but who really is your customer? Because most businesses, even real estate agents, they say anybody. You guys might be thinking anybody who wants to buy a house. That's not necessarily true. And doing that is a disservice. You need to think who is your customer? Who can you best service? Who do you have the best solution for? Who are you most accustomed to working with that you do really well with? Who provides you the best margin, the easiest sale, the least headaches? That's your ideal customer. Who are they? Draw that out, right? What are their characteristics? What are their beliefs? What do they look like? What is their age? Where do they live? What's their job? All those things you can take down, right? And then what's the biggest pain point in their life that you can solve? So in real estate, for example, someone that's worked with an agent before that had a bad experience and they have all these lists of nightmares that happened, they're gonna have that fear going to the next transaction. They're gonna be very apprehensive as you've probably seen. What pain have they had? Did it take too long? Was it bad communication? They were never gonna respond to? Were they just not getting the houses they were actually looking for? They had some sort of pain that frustrated them deeply. What can you do to solve that? Because when you figure that out, you can show them. That can be the base of your advertising, right? And then what would their deciding factor be? This is a tricky one. We've worked with a lot of teams, a lot of agents. Because there's so many real estate professionals in any one market, it's one of the most common professions, it becomes a little bit difficult to differentiate, which means you have to put more effort into it. What makes you different? If, I'm, if I said right now I'm looking for a deal, I'm looking for a house here in Barrie, 3,000 square feet, five years old, I don't know, close to downtown Barrie, probably not close to downtown, South Barrie, South Barrie. Why any of you? Like, why any one particular person at this table? Like, you have to be able to answer that. Like, if, I, if you were bidding for my business right now, and I said, okay, how about you? No, nope. how about you? Someone give me a reason why I should go with them. And it can't just be because I'm better, right? I'll, I'll higher level of service. If that's true, show them how. What's the higher level of service? Do you pick them up at their door in a Mercedes and show them around? Like, do they get lunch after their, what do you actually, what is the higher, because a lot of people say it, but they don't do it. So figure that out. That stuff's irrelevant, we got that deep already. But the more detail you can dive into, the better. Picture this in your head, go as deep as you can, and really think about it. Trust me, it'll make everything cheaper, everything easier. The other thing you gotta do is your value proposition, which kind of ties back into this, but again, how and why are you different from your competition? So if you can get one sentence that just says, I'm the best person to do business with because, and give me one sentence that's unique and different, that's something you want to lead your advertising with. That's the message you want to push to potential customers. Okay? Everyone got that? Cool? Then we need to set the right goals. When we get into social media, we don't want to just go in every which direction. I don't want to tell you just two or three strategies and you do it. I want you to set goals. Why are we doing this? Goals are high level. Increase sales, grow your audience, build an email list, increase retention, whatever it is. You need to figure that out. Because believe it or not, most people using social media don't have a clear goal. They want more business, that's fine. But if you don't have a clear goal, then what's your content steering towards, right? Like it looks very different if you're building a list versus if you're trying to sell a product versus if you're trying to grow your audience. It takes different content, different methodologies, different advertisements, different creative. You gotta figure out what that goal is, high level. The other part is objectives. What does it mean to succeed at that? If you're trying to get more sales, do you guys want one more house a month? One more house a year? One more house a week? You gotta figure that out. What's actually the number that's, okay, I want more sales, how many? Because that's how you're gonna be able to set a budget. How to determine a budget. This might get a little confusing without a whiteboard, but I think you guys can follow me. Very simple. All you gotta do is, what's the average amount of money you net on a deal? What do you take home? What's a deal worth to you, right? Then how many deals does that client do? In real estate, because deals happen kind of far and few in between, like someone's gonna buy a house, they're not gonna buy one next month, unless it's an investor you're working with, that's a different story. But if it's a one-time purchase, just go with a 12-month value, so it's likely, what's one deal worth to you? If it's 4,000, it's 4,000. If it's 8,000, it's 8,000. If it's 10, it's 10. What's a deal worth? And then all we gotta say is, what are you willing to spend to acquire that? So if a customer's worth $1,000 to me, what are you willing to spend? Typically, a safe side is 20 to 30%. So if they're worth 1,000, I'll spend $300 per customer I want. Why is that important? Because then all you get to say is how many clients do you want per month? That's how you're gonna set a reasonable, non-emotional budget when it comes to what are you gonna spend on social media. So we'll manage ad budgets up to whatever, 20K a month. 
but that's all based on what can we bring back? Because if we're doing 20K, we're probably bringing back 100K a month. It all depends. So you have to think of it that way. And this gets you realistic. Believe it or not, a lot of companies will lose money, not real estate, but a lot of companies will lose money acquiring a customer knowing that they'll upsell them later, right? Because they know their sales cycle. They know you'll buy 10 more times in the next month. Any questions on that? No? Danielle, are we good on time? Cool. Okay. We're going to actually break down this seven-figure system now. Go a little deeper into it. So there's three major components to the strategy that I mentioned earlier. You have awareness, you have lead gen, and you have sales and conversion. Okay? We're going to break these down. So step one, this is the top of that pyramid that you saw, filling the top of the funnel. So the goal of this stage, like I mentioned before, is to generate massive targeted attention for your content and brand. You just want to get as many eyes on as you possibly can to high quality, high value, engaging, entertaining content. Not boring stuff, not stuff about you, not about what you've done, something they need, your customer needs. What's the pain? It goes back to that point when you're figuring out that demographic. What's the thing that they need? That's what that video has to be on, okay? The first step is when you give value, the reason we gotta do this is it's a lot like, I always say dating, okay? It's always my example. I don't just walk up to a bar I mean, I'm dating someone now, so I can't do that anyway. But I don't just walk into a bar and say, hey, you're really cute. Want to get married? Like, how weird is that? But yet we do it in advertising all the time. We go, this is my name. I'm selling this. Want to buy it? Imagine even doing that at a networking event or a conference. Like, you don't do that. It never works. Never works in dating. Never works in business. Unless, like, in dating, maybe if you do that 100 times a night, once a week, you'll get lucky. And that's what's happening with people on social media. They're doing that strategy, and they're getting lucky once a week, and then saying it doesn't work. So we need to warm people up. We need to have a conversation first. We need to get ideas flowing, trust flowing. I need you to like me. I need you to laugh. Let's just get that. That's what this really is. So here's an example of an ad from Frank Kern. He's kind of an advertising legend in the online space. He started in the 90s, um, totally crushing it right now. But he makes videos like this, and all he does is he targets people like me that own businesses, um, business owners, marketers. He leads with these very high value videos teaching strategies that you're like, how is this free? Like he, he'll break down his whole strategy for you. And then an hour later, you get retargeted by something. But all he does is he doesn't ask for a sale. He doesn't ask for a product. He's not saying, buy my thing, click here. He gives you value at the end. He goes, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, share it with a friend. Just want to give you this value. And that's it. He wipes his hands and walks away. All innocent, as if he doesn't have another funnel that's going to retarget me, right? So things like that. And the benefits, why do we do this? Why do we lead with an awareness stage? Why am I making you waste time, quote unquote, to do this when we could just sell the product, get straight to it? There's actually practical reasons. So besides the other stuff I said, we can get views on these videos for as low as a cent a view, sometimes lower. There's strategies to go as low as a quarter cent per view that we're working on. What does this mean? This means I can run, like if I was working with one of you, I can run an ad for one of you, right? And get you 100,000 views for $1,000. That 100,000 views, not only is it going to get 100,000 people that can consume our content, will know who you are, will build trust, and find out, oh, you're the authority that just solved my pain point. You clearly know what I'm going through and can help me. Not only do we have 100,000 of those people, and that's targeted, by the way, that's a cent of you of people in the cities we want, in the demographic we want, in the age we want, with the interests we want, at a cent, one cent. The most expensive one I ever ran was four cents. That was the worst we've ever done. That was still four cents. This, yes, builds trust, builds authority. It does all those fun things. But more importantly, which I sometimes forget to mention, is it filters people out. Because what's happening is you're spending a bunch of money and you run traffic to a post. You just boost it, an ad. And it costs you $2 for them to click through. And you pay $2 just to find out that was the wrong person they're not buying anyway. Well, it cost me one cent. Because for me, if they go on the video and don't like what we're doing, they leave. Well, Facebook tracks that. Facebook tracks every single person that watches every single video and every single ad. And I can now retarget people. Now I'll have an offer, and you'll see that in the next stage. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. But now I can retarget and say, hey, show my next ad where I'm actually selling something only to people who saw 75% of my video. Well, what does that do? I just filtered out all the people. If they didn't stick through, which means I can go through a lot more people and be a lot more efficient with my ad spend. So here's some examples. Uh, here's some results we got from a campaign. You can see that we did 97,000 views. This is a real screenshot. 97,000 targeted views in a local city for $954. Like radio doesn't even touch it. And that was in a very short period of time. Now, so, yeah? Is that your third campaign that you've done or just one single ad that you've done? That stat? Yeah. 
it's in a campaign base, but the way we run it is like the campaign itself is the awareness objective. And then within that, we'll have multiple ads running at the same time to split test. And then we usually turn most off, leave one or two. So it's from that one push, so but one budget. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. It a period of time that you ran all the different. Oh, you can. Or this was just one time deal. You ran all of them. Yeah. And reached all of those people. No, that's a good question. So that can, the cool thing about this is it's totally flexible. So that could be done in a day. I can't remember that particular one. I believe that was a three-week campaign. I don't know if you remember, Haley. Was that three-week? I think it was a three-week campaign we ran, right? But that's only limited by budget. It'll get you the same number of views based on the money. If you give me a $1,000 budget in one day, we can do that in one day. If you want to split that over two months, we can split it over two months. It's more a budget thing, but it can happen over a period of time or it can happen all in one shot. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to grasp right. how much would that cost as a concept. Right. So it's all based on, like, if you, you come up with a budget, so if you said I can do $1,000 a month, I could say that's what it would look like every month. But if you said a day, you could blow it up, right? You have three million views in a month. So that'd be effective. That's a great question. So here's examples. I'm not going to play them all. I just want to show you. But examples for Piewood Pizza, example for Sweetworks. They're basic videos we've done. Maybe you've seen some, maybe you haven't. Uh, but they're basic videos we've done. Pi doing a full walkthrough, showing the restaurant. They were dressed up in fun costumes, just showing what they do and what the environment is and the culture. And Sweetworks was the same thing. So Sweetworks, we did something called more than a desk campaign. So Regis offices, for those who don't know, is moving into Barrie. They're like the corporate type. Um, virtual office co-working center, right? They're a big like international chain. And our job is to try to figure out how we can ensure customers keep coming to the local homegrown Sweetworks. What we did is a campaign called More Than a Desk and it was for an awareness stage, which we just went to every, like as anyone would get a hold of inside the building and say, hey, why is Sweetworks more than a desk to you? Because we figure Regis, corporate, they're there to make money. It's not gonna feel the same. So let's highlight the strength. What's the pain point? If you go to Regis, you're gonna say, yeah, it's great, but I didn't really feel at home. I didn't really feel taken care of. You go to Sweetworks, you're getting one-to-one -one help. You see the same people every day. They give each other gifts and they have fun and they, like, it's an environment. So we just ask people, why is Sweetworks more than a desk? And we let them answer, put them all together in a video, and that was an awareness stage ad, right? And that just went out to anyone we wanted to target in Barry, And then anyone who watched that, we would have retargeted with our next step. Any questions on awareness stage? Because we're getting some good questions. I know I'm going really fast, but is there any questions? Once that's done, once you've ran a video, and by the way, that video, three to six minutes is gold. Even between that, five minutes right in between is perfect. You need more than three minutes because less than three minutes is not enough time to really build rapport. More than six minutes, you've likely lost retention. Like you need to be really good at speaking or building creative for them to last. Yeah? Facebook like a 60 second. No, Instagram. Instagram does 60. And that's just, so if we want to run on Facebook and Instagram, we would just cut a video of a 60 second version of the long version. But if we're just talking straight Facebook, three to six minutes, you can do, you can do 40 minutes on Facebook if you want. I never thought that people, okay, let's face it, how many people watch more than 40, like statistically, I always thought it was lower than yep. three yep. to five minutes. Yep. And they do. Somebody's the ones, nope, you want to filter out the ones that will, that's the point, the ones that will stick that three minutes are highly interested and engaged in what you're saying. So it's creating a video, and there's an art to it, like creating, scripting, and making content that's actually gonna engage for three minutes. Like Frank Kern does videos for 48 minutes and gets like 60% average watch times. So it's just like a show. You'll watch something on Netflix for two hours if it's made really well and interests you. You'll watch something for three minutes if it's hitting that sore spot and really solving your problem or very entertaining. It's keeping you going, it's keeping you laughing, it's keeping you crying. You will watch three minutes, no problem. And the people that don't, they're gonna be harder to get a hold of anyway. Those are gonna be the leads that, if you've experienced, will come in and you'll call and they'll never pick up their phone. And you'll call them seven more times and they still won't pick up and they'll just pick up eventually and say, I don't remember why you're calling me and opt in for anything. That's what you're gonna get. Short attention span, they move too quickly. But the ones that stayed, that's our, right, our golden, so especially for real estate, you don't need 100 customers every week. You need one or two good ones every month and it's super worth it. So I don't care if out of 100,000, 90,000 don't finish. Right? I don't care if 99,000 don't finish, but 1,000 will get halfway and 10 or 20 will finish. And those 10 or 20, I want to bring back in and see if they're going to do business with us. That's kind of the logic. Great question. Any other questions? Can you do videos? Sorry? Can you do like we can do videos. Yeah. We have a wonderful guy in the back, Josh, who does a lot of fun things with a lot of fancy gear usually. And he films for us like all the time, full time, every day. Okay. So that's that. So once we have that awareness stage video and we got all those views, I don't get views just for views sake, which has probably become apparent. Now we want to exchange value for information. I want to take all the people that watched my video 
of a certain percentage. We usually test it, like 25%, we'll test 50%, test 75%. I wanna hit all those people with some sort of offer, a lead generation offer for me. So I'm gonna say, hey, you watch my video, clearly you're interested. Now, do you trust me enough to give me your information in exchange for something of value, right? An ebook, maybe, a free training guide, uh, an email course, uh, whatever it is, something very low value, low barrier. Let me just see if now you'll actually communicate with me. Now, the beauty of this is anyone who actually opts in at this stage will have already watched that big chunk of your original awareness video. So they'll know who you are. So they're not gonna be completely cold, so they have to decide that I already know who you are, and yes, I wanna give you my information, which will avoid the problem of calling people that go, I don't remember why you're calling me, I didn't opt in for anything, because you see that all the time, right? Definitely happens. Has that happened to anybody, by the way? You ever call like a lead that comes in your CRMs or your websites? Yeah, see? It happens all the time, especially those lead gen system things. So what we do in this stage is we build an ad, like I just said, give away an ebook, give away something like free training, because now they know you, now they like you, they're more likely to buy from you, they're warm, but most importantly, you can now acquire leads at a fraction of the cost. When you were originally running your ads for like $2 a click, and then maybe by the time someone bought, maybe every four or five views, one person opted in, you're spending 12, 13, 14 dollars a lead. But this, we're only showing it to people that already liked us, that we already own in our retargeting audience, they're not cold. So I can get click-throughs, eight cents, 10 cents, or we can get leads at a dollar a lead, no problem. A dollar a lead all day, and they're warm, and they know who you are. So that's the biggest benefit now, is you're gonna get not just warm leads, but cheaper leads. So better quality, less cost. It's like a Ferrari if it goes on sale. That's what we're trying to build. So examples, you'll see again a screenshot, uh, I don't remember the length of this campaign, but 266 leads, the point is the amount of money spent. 266 leads came in for $618.48. So that's people that said, yes, I've seen what you're up to, I know who you are, and yes, I want that thing you're giving me, I'll give you my email or my number or my name or whatever. So the cost is like $2. This was actually for a service that was a monthly service. Um, his budget was very small, so that, that was probably like a month and a half, but you could do it in a day, no problem. It's not the time, it's the budget. Um, but his service was worth $499 a month. So a client to him was worth $499 a month for an average 12 month contract or 24 month, that's his offering. So imagine if 266 leads for $600, if he closes one, but he didn't, he closed like 15%. So the ROI is pretty crazy and we're still at a time where this is possible. It's getting harder because big brands are dumping billions in and it's making everything more expensive, but you can still do it. 2019 might be the last year you can really do it this cheap, but you can still do it. So examples, this is one of our lead gen funnels. So if you've seen my videos online or you've seen something from me and then you get retargeted by this later tonight or something, don't be surprised, <laughs> but it'll be an ebook. So for example, we have a social media sales funnel secrets. It's a little ebook, 40 pages. This pops up as an ad that you can see on the, I guess your left. And then on the right side is the landing page they go to. It has more social proof about me below. They put their email, they put their name. It thanks them with a warm like thank you video and I get the lead. Now I know they saw my content, they downloaded my little ebook on whatever it is. And this works in real estate. I'll show you some examples after. Any questions on lead gen? Makes sense why we do it, the benefit? No? Okay. Once that's done, and I'm throwing this all at you, but keep picturing this pyramid in your head. And keep that mind open, by the way. We're doing one strategy. This is advertising, but this works anywhere. Yeah? Sorry, I did. 100%. So what is, the first one's a video. What is the, uh, what are you retargeting the way? So, going back to how I mentioned, like, the product. So it could be an ebook, a training video. Now, the media you use to promote that is up to you. I've done it a lot with pictures. At this point, they already know who I am. I'm not struggling so much for the attention. I already got the rapport, but that could easily just be me holding up a printout of my ebook saying, hey, I got this ebook. This is what's in it. Click below and download it now. That could be a video or a photo or a carousel. It could be anything you want. The important part of that is what you give. And how would that apply to real estate? So I can show you. At the end, we have examples of some, but we've done, like, we've had realtors give away um, ebooks that are basically, some of them are just like basically buyer guides, everything you need to know if you're buying in Barry, all the experiences they've gone through, all the tips, tricks that they need to give away, give that away. We've done training videos where they'll opt in and they'll download like, you know, a 10 minute video of that realtor in an office talking about a particular high value subject. We've done um, sort of like drip campaign training. So they'll opt in and then today they'll get an email which is like part one, what to look for when buying in Barry. And then tomorrow they'll get part two, what you need to know if you're doing X, Y, Z. And then the next day they'll get another one. So they opt into that. So you gotta get creative, but it's all about what can you give them. And then the media is up to you. Photos, like graphic designer photos are easier, but you can totally use video again. Up to you. Is that kind of answer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Anything else? No. So once we get all that, and like I said, keep your mind open. I'm showing you how to do this on Facebook, but think about this, by the way. This is how all communication in the world works. 
It's how you meet your clients. It's how you network. It's how you do anything. You build awareness first. You tell people who you are. You build a relationship. They trust you. Then you ask for things. Do you want to come out tomorrow night? Do you want to do this? And then you close, right? So it's always the same. We need to build. It doesn't matter if you're doing this on Facebook, on Instagram, on your next print advertisement. If you're doing radio campaigns, that's fine. Think of it in steps just like this. Think always of how do you build awareness first, value, trust, then start selling. We've got to stop trying to sell right out the gate. So the last piece of that is the actual selling. So once we have all that warm audience, let's say 100,000 in our, in, our, in our retargeting audience, 100,000 people watched our videos, then we have maybe 1,000 leads, 1,000 people opt in and download our ebook or our training video. Well, now what? We got a bunch of views that we can retarget and we got a bunch of leads. A, you could start calling all your leads and for sure you probably should. Don't sell them anything yet. Have someone call them up at your office or call them up yourself, whatever it is, and just say, hey, thank you so much for downloading that ebook that we gave out. Just want to know if you had any questions about it. Want to thank you in person. How'd you find it? Awesome. Click. You can do that. Again, no hard selling. But then after that's all done, you've called them all up and you followed up with them. How can we use social now to continue that cycle and close, right? In real estate, it's a little trickier because you're not going to sell anything online, but you can definitely push them a lot closer. You can be a lot more direct. So this is the stage that retargets everything above. So in the final stage, we retarget all those video views, we retarget all those leads. Everybody is going to constantly now just get peppered with this. And by the way, one thing I didn't mention, the funnels that you see there, we don't build the first one, run it, stop, build the second one, run it, stop, third one, run it, stop. We run all three at the same time. So always, 24-7, people are coming in watching your video, then they go you know, to the bathroom, come back, and they see the lead gen. And they download that, and the next day they turn their phone back on, and then they see the offer. It's always filling your pool of prospects, generating leads, and selling in one big circle. Because a lot of people confuse it. I think it's, it's not one at a time. We build them all three at the same time. Okay? So this is the third one. It retargets all the awareness stage, all the lead gen stage, and actually makes them an offer. So basically, anyone who's a warm prospect that everybody knows us, trusts us, has given us their information, which means they trust us enough to give us that, because that's getting harder and harder these days, we actually give them an offer and try to get them to make an actual sale, right? They already know you, they already trust you, all that fun stuff. The best part, just like in leads, your cost now is much lower, because now these people are hyper-filtered. They've watched your videos, they've given you their email, their name, they've become a lead, now you're giving them an offer. This is going to become ridiculously cheaper. And every time, I don't know if I mention it again later, but every time we do this strategy, the typical result we see is we get twice the results at half the cost. So whatever you're doing now, like running traffic to an ad, I would get twice the result at half the cost. So if you spent $1,000 and got 1,000 leads, I would spend $500 and get 2,000 leads. That's been the average stat when we changed to this strategy. So the cost savings is incredible. So here's an example. Anybody know Nine Round and Barry? Anybody know James Positano? No, no. So nine round, they're actually like right there. So they're right across the street, which is why I ask. But we ran a campaign for them. Same strategy, awareness, lead gen, and then sale. This was his offer, an example. He was doing a Kickstarter, a four-week Kickstarter. You pay up 199 bucks. You opt in. You work out for 14 or four weeks. And if you lose 15 pounds, you get your money back. If you don't, they apply it to a membership, and you get three more months of membership with them. Win-win. So this was an ad that was being shown to anyone who watched his awareness videos, anyone who generated a lead, whatever the case is. Um, and they would see this. They click it. It would take them to a landing page, they'd opt in again, it would take them to a payment page, they'd pay and they'd leave. Now, as a realtor, you're not gonna sell anything. I hope, hey, maybe we're going that way, you can sell something online. That'd be kind of interesting if you could sell a house online. But you're not gonna be selling. We're not gonna have a page for like, you know, one, two, three, Avenue Court, purchase now. But we can book things. Like, what's, what's the most valuable part? What's the closest part of your sales cycle to a purchase? I don't know, like you guys can tell me, but if it's a consultation, right? Whatever it is, that, like, if you want to get something in your office or you want someone is selling their house and they want an assessment or they want a marketing plan, like how, how are you going to market my house, whatever that last piece is, is what you're going to plug here. Because that won't work until they know you, trust you, have opted in as leads already. There's almost zero chance, and if you, you can, but very expensive, there's no profitable way to run traffic to, this is me, I'm a realtor, I sell houses, um, come in and book consultation, I want to sell your house. No one's going through that. There's no, and if they do, it's ridiculously expensive. But here they will. It'll actually work here because now they've gone so far through your funnel, they enjoy your content, right? They trust you. Now that will actually work. Like, oh yeah, that's the guy I was watching his video yesterday and I downloaded the ebook that was super helpful and he sent me that email after the ebook and I thought, wow, it was really valuable. You know what, I will go sit down and have a chat. Or I will give him a call and see if he's gonna check out my house, right? See what it's worth. So now that works. So you can sell, but you gotta do it warm. Just like networking, same deal. 
So it applies. Even if you're not selling anything online, it applies. So I want to see, I have some bonus content just for you guys. So some examples. Now, I'm hesitant to do examples in real estate because as lovely as everybody is, there is always rivalries. So all I ask is, whoever this realtor is, I have permission to use their examples. No bad comments, no like, oh, that's the guy that did this. He's a great guy, I've worked with him and I wanna use him. He was gracious enough to let us use his content to show you guys examples. So we have Mr. George Nagel. How many people know George Nagel? Can we get around? He's a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. Corky, funny, but very nice guy. Can you play that, Haley, for me? Oh, actually, sorry, wait, before you do that. This is a video, for example, we didn't shoot this for George. George sent us, this is how simple it can be. George is so busy, he's always all over the place. So he sent us a video of him kickboxing. And he goes, I wanna do something really quirky, really fun, really like engaging with this. What can you do? And I'm like, I don't know, it's a video of you kicking a bag. So we took it and we did something really quirky and fun that matched his style. And it doesn't look fantastic, but it worked. So watch this. So here's another example. So when you talk about lead gen and giving away eBooks or PDFs or anything like that, this is one we did for him, very simple. So he has like a real estate, as a lot of people do, a weekly real estate report with all the listings that sold, what they sold for. But we made it fun. Instead of just like join my newsletter, we made it look kind of like a, a copy, like a real estate report. We do all the graphic design, we made these ads, and that was just coming into his lead gen. So anyone who watched his ads, what would happen is a lot of people would watch his ads and then they would get retargeted and they would be seeing this, like get the ebook, get our, our market report, get on our weekly market list. And then they would see other ads to actually convert them. And sometimes the lead gen wouldn't be an ebook, it would be a video. And that last video you saw was actually one we originally used as that. People would opt in to get a training video and they'd be sent that and it's really fun, right? So they already know who they are, they watch it, it's, it's engaging. So, and when we build these, we test all kinds of things. Like we'll test different creatives, different copy, different headlines, um, and we do all that fun stuff. But it, it's easy to keep it simple and generate leads, right? And what'll happen is when someone, for example, is another piece we do, when someone will click that, like they click get on the, mar the market report, we don't just drive to his website. Typically we build custom landing pages, we do that all in house, and make something like that. So they go to a really cool page, very high converting, no distractions, no other links, put the email in, get on the list. So it's important that we build those funnels. So they'll see an ad, they'll see the ebook, they'll click it, they'll get to a page like this and they'll opt in and that's how he's generating leads. Another thing we did really well with George that then we did with a lot of people is viral social contests. They're super easy to do, but you gotta do them right and make sure you capitalize on them. Basically you give something away. It can be as little as a hundred bucks. hundred bucks, like people, I don't know if it's a city thing, but people here will fight over a hundred dollar Costco card. Um, they really like Costco. So we gave away a hundred dollar Costco card uh, from George and basically they had to do a certain number of things to get involved. So they'd follow or like the page, comment on the post and tag three friends who want to shop at Costco, right? Now this does a few things. One, it gets a bunch of people looking at George. Two, he got like 400 followers in like three days. He got uh, 117 shares, 334 comments. And I'll show you another one that even better. Um, and the cool thing is, not only does he grow his social following, grow his engagement levels, get new eyeballs on his page for almost free, we set up a system, it's called a chat bot, and we automate so that anytime someone, so it says, for example, follow our page or comment on this post, we'll set up a chat bot, and a chat bot's just an automated way. If you ever use Facebook Messenger to write to somebody or respond to a message, we automate that. And we'll say, anytime somebody comments on this contest, please send them whatever. And so we'll send them like another fun video of George or his ebook or his newsletter to make sure that all 300 people that commented are also getting that offer, right? And the beauty is this costs very, very little. Like we'll, we'll boost that for like, not boost it, we're gonna add to it for like $15, $20. But it kind of goes on its own because people start tagging people. So you get one person, you actually got four people. And so it self propels and you're generating leads without really generating leads. It doesn't look like you're doing that. And that works really well. Another example he does is his gift basket. So this was another really big one. He was giving away that whole gift basket, which really doesn't cost that much to build. It's not like a thousand dollar basket, um, but people love it. And you got 351 shares, 361 likes, 337 comments. So this is a very fun way. If you take one thing away from today and you don't want to do the whole, all these stages and all these parts, try a viral social media contest. Give something away and ask people to like or follow your page, right? Tag someone who either would be interested in what you do or interested in the prize and comment or share whatever it is, right? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, but Facebook now penalizes you if you tell people to like your page to enter a contest. They don't, I've tested it. It works really, really well. They're doing like, even if they are, maybe we would have got 500 likes, now we got three, it's still worth it. It's still very, very worth it. And as long as it's good content, it's not scammy, it's not like a weird, if it's like pure value, here's a real basket, let's get this going. And it's a legit business, there's no problem with it. So try that out, give something away, take a picture or video of it, give them those three criteria, run that. Business page. 
business page. Good question. So note, you can't actually run Facebook ads on a personal profile. There's Facebook profiles. That's the thing you log into and use with your family. And there's pages. Those are basically run by, you'd be an admin on that, but it's a page and that's for business only. So this all has to happen on a business page. Cool. So what's next? That's all I really got for that piece. So all I want to let you guys off with is no matter how good the system is, no matter how good all this theory is, I know we had very little time. It's only going to work if you put in the work and actually do it. Right? Maybe you're not going to do all of it. Maybe you're not going to do it alone, but you got to do it. So you have two options. You either go through all these notes, you go through today, and you do it on your own, or you hire a team of trained professionals like us. And there's a lot of ways we can work with real estate agents. We can do it from a service perspective where we build things and manage everything for you if you have the budget. It's definitely not cheap. We can do coaching. We can do one-on-ones where we meet with you once a month and just help you, support you. You can tap into our expertise. You can come into our office. And eventually we're working on it, we'll have training. We'll have complete online academies of every platform. You can learn it A to Z and that'll be super cheap. So all those are coming. There's a lot of ways we can work with you now and in the future. So keep that in mind. If anyone's interested in that, all you gotta do, and you can come talk to me after, but book an exploration session. You go to our website, suitsocial.com. First button you see is take the first step. Fill that form and talk to me for 15 minutes. You'll talk to me or one of my account managers, Brianna, who's not here. Um, Tell her what you need, tell me what you need we'll point you in the right direction. Do you need our help? Do you not? Do you need service? Do you need coaching? Do you just need a couple tips on the phone and we let you go? Whatever it is, that's how we work. Book that, have a chat, let me know what you think of it all and we'll help you go through it. But that's all I got guys, so thank you so much. I really appreciate all the time. Thank you.